Welcome to the next episode of Team Talk. And as of your request, we have added a serious person to the show. Welcome to another Team Talk episode. A mildly amusing Team Talk episode, as we are now officially not funny anymore. Let's start with uh, the feedback. Yeah. yeah. You have supplied us with great feedback. Thanks for voting and taking, participating in the survey. The results are in and they are shocking. We asked uh, the question, should Max and Sebastian try to be funny? So this luckily excludes you completely. <laughs> and 41% said yes. What yes? Yes, we should be funny. Oh, we should be funny. All right. No, no, we, if we should try to be funny. Try to be funny. Yes. Okay. We should try to be funny. 46% said we should better reduce it to mildly amusing. But that's good news because that means we were more than mildly amusing before. Most likely, yes. 13% yeah. said um, scrap the fun. And the next question was, uh, should we read everything off the teleprompter and have the script pre-written and read it off the teleprompter? Or should we do it completely improvised, just what comes to our mind, basically? So what was the result? The result was, stunningly, 80% prefer us to not read stuff. All right. Perfect. Because I cannot read anyway. <laughs> and I can't remember doing stuff, so... <laughs> Also, we asked uh, people what the team talk should be about, what topics we should include, what's uh, more favorable from people. All right. And the results are that uh, the team talks should include future developments currently being evaluated and discussed, mm -hmm. with uh, almost 90%. We should include more insights into the daily business, daily lives of things we encounter. Less people are interested in uh, events, trade shows, fairs, yeah. reports about this. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Speaking of developments around the Axiom, in comes who, who, Simon. Who do we have here? <laughs> Simon is joining us today for this team talk because we also asked people if we should include interviews with team members. And Simon is working on Project Elmira. And I guess. Just explain to Max or to me, what is Elmira actually doing? Yeah. So uh, Elmira is basically a software project that we initiated during the uh, Axiom Gamma development. And the background um, thought was to have software that helps us to visualize hardware components that we're currently working on. Because we have very uh, fast cycles of developing a new version of a component, for instance. And now the question is, how can we easily communicate that to the audience? Each time you get a new component, you would run to your designer and say, okay, now I need a new visualization because one screw has changed or, I don't know, the color of the board or something. And so the idea was, how can we take all this overhead and automate away everything that we possibly can? And this is basically what led to the development of Project Admira. In practice, this is basically a server that anyone can set up. So it's um, actually online uh, on GitHub. It's fully documented. It runs on Linux, on Mac OS, and on Windows. Um, so anyone is, can feel free to check it out and try it out. And basically, as soon as the server runs, anyone in the team can take input data, so raw CAD data, basically, STL, um, OBJ, etc., and put it into the system through a wizard. And the wizard allows to make very easy choices. Do I want a still image? Do I want an animation or a web 3D widget? Uh, do I want it to be a turntable style camera or should it be still? Um, should the user be able to control the um, viewpoint? Uh, should it maybe be a cross section so that I can see inside of the model? Should it be an animated cross section? All this, basically all the types of visualizations that you classically need in um, this um, field of communicating hardware development, all this is um, easily available to anyone on the team. So also people from the press department, 
um, management can do this, not only the designer and the uh, hardware dude. Does it also mean that you can actually start documenting the hardware before everything is finished, right? Because the traditional process when a big corporation develops a camera is that the designers screw around and it takes iteration after iteration. And once everything is set in stone and everything is finished, they hand it over to the documentation or public relations sub-department and then they make all these kind of uh, illustrations of drawn lines where the components, where the connectors are. And that's something you can actually start doing from day one now, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So the idea is basically that as soon as you have anything, you can um, already not only start a visualization, but also already deploy it. Um, E.g. you write a news article and you just um, pick whatever you have, like the first initial hardware version, and put it through the wizard and you get a link out of that and you can already post that on your blog for instance. It's a picture for example or a video. Yeah, it could be a picture, it could be a video, it could be a widget and with this link you just put the link in, into your wiki system or blog or whatever, post it there and at that moment probably in the in like f first five minutes you already have something there so you can already post the article although the visualization might not be the final version or complete in any way, but you have something to show around um, that you don't need to worry about anymore. So it's just out there and in the background you can then just uh, iteratively replace that model that you have used to create the original visualization and update the visualization. And the link stays the same and just delivers the up-to-date content every time you visit it again and again. And it also not only um, in terms of version it updates, but also in terms of quality. So within a few minutes you get a first draft version because rendering can take very long. If you what is it using for rendering? Oh, of course, yeah, it's Blender based. Oh. This is very important, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it absolutely would, it wouldn't have been possible without that because uh, it's very easily available and it's open, of course, it's free. It's great, yeah. <laughs> and it was also presented at the Blender conference last year. Sounds cool. Very cool. Good job. <laughs> <Yeah>. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any future plans, future additions, things that you have on your to-do list that are, might be interesting? Yeah, so, so what I would personally find most interesting is to get some feedback from people who might be interested to use that and to tell me what parts about it um, maybe prevent them from using it. So Because um, the more use cases I see, the more people tell me um, it would be totally interesting if this were a little different or I want to deploy it like this or something like this. Um, this really helps to kind of find the direction it should go into because um, it shouldn't be all like theory and I think how people use the system but I actually want to gather feedback how people want to use it and then I'm very willing to um, listen to that and make the changes so there's an opportunity like you can get free changes if you give me feedback. <laughs> but currently users have to install their own instance of Elmira on their own server, right? That's yeah, the kind this, of this is focus how it's currently. meant to be, yeah. but it's also very easy. So it's, it's well documented, it's really um, non, I mean you have to have some kind of technical <laughs> knowledge, but it's, it's really, uh, you don't have to be a programmer or anything, it's very low barrier. Perfect. Yeah. Did somebody use this already? Uh, so far? We have a uh, running um, test installation of course, um, and I talked to some people um, here in Vienna um, on, of course, at the conference who were interested. I, I don't know of anyone who's yet using it in production. Um, yeah, so that's why, why I'm saying it's very, it would be very cool to, to get some uh, real life feedback, like how could people use it. I'm sure many people will be interested in that once they, they just have to. Get to yeah. know it. Yeah, I, I got to say, yeah, I'm really bad at marketing, so uh, <laughs> I think I wanted you to make like a screencast and spin it around a bit, but um, yeah, like then, then life happens. And, but at least now I'm sitting here and yeah, so let's change that. <laughs> this concludes our team talk. We hope you didn't find it too offensively funny. Until next time. <laughs>